This is the second part of my web development series. In the first episode, we talked about some of the facts and challenges about web development. In this episode, we're going to talk about the five essential skills you need to land your first front-end development job. I'm going to give you a detailed explanation of various languages and tools you need to know, as well as a proper learning path and suggestions on how long it will take you to learn these. Hi, my name is Mosh Hamadani, and I've taught millions of people how to code and how to become professional software engineers through this channel and my coding school, CodeWithMosh.com. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe as I upload new videos all the time. There's so many languages and tools out there. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, C Sharp, C++, PHP, Python, React, Jesus. If you have been confused and feel overwhelmed, you are not alone, trust me. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a clear and solid learning path so you spend your time on the things that matter the most. One of the mistakes that a lot of beginners make is that they waste so much time jumping from one thing to another and they don't learn anything properly. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a summary of these languages and their purpose, but I've also compiled a complete PDF that contains a detailed list of the stuff you need to learn. The link is below this video. So to become a front-end developer, you need to start with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are the fundamental languages of front-end development. We use HTML to structure our web pages, we use CSS to make them beautiful, and JavaScript to program them. Let me give you an analogy. Think of a building. A building in the real world is like a web page on the internet. It has a skeleton or structure. It can have pretty walls, windows, and tiles, and it can have certain functionality. For example, when we press the elevator button, it comes to pick us up. Here's a real example. Let's say we wanna build a website like Twitter. For each tweet, we wanna have a layout like this. So first we use HTML to define all the building blocks of this layout. What are the building blocks here? An image, some text indicating the user's Twitter handle, another block of text containing the message, and three icons for commenting, retweeting, and liking the tweet. We use HTML to add these building blocks to our web page. Then we use CSS to give it visual effects. For example, with CSS, we can make the font bold, we can make our image round, we can add some padding around here, we can change the color of these icons and define their look when we hover over them. So CSS is all about aesthetics or visual effects. And finally, we use JavaScript to add functionality to this web page to decide what should happen when the user clicks on any of these icons. Every web page on the internet you have seen is built with these three languages. So the better you learn and understand these languages and their features, the better you will be at front-end development. Okay, so that's all for the fundamentals. What's next? Well, building websites often includes a bunch of repetitive tasks. This is where front-end frameworks and libraries come. A framework or a library comes with a lot of code that we can reuse in our websites. So they help us get the job done faster. That's why a lot of companies these days use one of these popular frameworks like React, Angular, or Vue. Now more accurately, React is not a framework, it's a library. The difference between a framework and a library is that a framework forces our application into a structure. So all applications built for the framework like Angular end up having a similar structure. So as you move from one project to another, you will see a lot of things are familiar. Libraries don't force our applications into a structure. They just provide some code for us to reuse. But subtle distinction aside, all these tools serve the same purpose. They help us build applications faster. Now, you don't need to learn all of these to get started. As you move jobs, you may need to learn about the other tools. Out of these, React is the most popular tool. It's built by Facebook and is used to build Facebook and Instagram. So I would say go for React. All right, what's next? Version control systems. We use version control systems to track our project history and work collaboratively with others. That's why you will find it in almost every job description. Git is the most popular version control system in the world and is used in 70% of software development teams. So just focus on Git and don't worry about other version control systems. All right, what's next? Well, CSS is kind of an old language and it has limitations. So if you use it on a medium-sized or a large website, sooner or later, your code starts to get pretty convoluted and becomes hard to maintain. So every time you wanna change something, 
you end up breaking something else. Now you might wonder why CSS hasn't evolved. Well, it has and is currently at version 3. But every time there is a new feature in CSS, all existing browsers need to support that feature. Unfortunately, this is a slow process. So this is where CSS preprocessors come in. A CSS preprocessor is a program or a tool that lets you generate CSS code from a different language that is better and more capable than CSS. So instead of using the plain old CSS, we use another language that looks very similar to CSS. In fact, it's almost identical, but it has some extra features. Then we give our code to a CSS preprocessor, so it gets converted to the plain old CSS code that all browsers can understand. That's the purpose of CSS preprocessors. There are many preprocessors out there like SAS, Less, and Stylus to name a few. But again, you don't have to learn all of them to get a front-end development job because these are all similar tools that serve the same purpose. They're all like screwdrivers manufactured by different companies. So as long as you understand the purpose of a CSS preprocessor and know how to use it, you're good to go. So my suggestion to you is to learn SAS because it's the most popular CSS preprocessor. Now we have the same problem with JavaScript because JavaScript is a fairly old language and has some limitations. So a lot of developers these days use a more modern language like TypeScript or CoffeeScript to write code. Then they give their code to a program or a tool called Transpiler, which will translate and compile the modern code to the old JavaScript code that all browsers can understand. Once again, you don't need to learn all of these languages. You just need to know one of them to get started. I would say go for TypeScript because it's most widely used. As you move jobs, you may work on a project that uses a different language. You can then quickly learn that other language in a short period of time because all these languages are more or less very similar. So to get your first front-end development job, first you need to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I would say if you spend three to five hours a day studying and coding, you should be able to have a reasonable understanding of the fundamentals in three months. You're not gonna be an expert, but you will understand them well enough to make things. Next, you need to learn a front-end framework or library like React. You would probably need one or two months to learn React. After that, you should learn a version control system like Git. You should be able to get the hang of it in about two weeks. These are the absolute essentials that you will find on almost every job description. Now, if you have extra time, I would recommend you to learn SAS and TypeScript to stand out from the rest of the crowd and increase your job opportunities. SAS is pretty easy and you would need a week or two to learn it. TypeScript requires a bit more time and would probably take you two to four weeks. So if you dedicate a few hours a day studying and coding, after six months, you should be able to apply for a junior front-end developer job. Of course, everyone is different. You may get there faster or it might take you longer to get there. Don't let that discourage you. I believe you can achieve anything if you're determined and passionate about it. Now, to learn these skills, I have plenty of tutorials on my channel. I also have comprehensive courses for serious learners. These courses are perfectly structured to take you from zero to hero in a step-by-step -step fashion. They also include real-world exercises that prepare you for the job and come with a certificate of completion that you can add to your resume. In case you're interested, head over to codewithmosh.com. In the next episode, we'll talk about backend development skills. If you found the information in this video valuable, please give it a like and share it with others. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos on programming.